In this video, I'm going to go over the discounted payback rule. And the discounted payback rule is very similar to the payback rule that we went over in the previous video. So if you didn't watch that video, make sure you do because I'm actually going to be bringing in concepts from that video. I'm going to show an example where I use the payback rule and then I'm going to show the discounted payback rule and how they compare. So when I'm doing this video, I'm assuming that you've already watched the payback rule video. So showing this through an example, let's say an asset costs us $250 and then it's going to generate $100 per year for the next four years. The discount rate is 10%. So let's show these cash flows in a chart. Usually we've been doing it in a timeline, but let's switch it up in this, uh, in this example. So we have that time zero cash flow of negative $250. And then in year one, two, three, and four, we're going to generate, or this asset's going to generate $100 per year. So those are going to be positive cash flows. And let's calculate the payback period to start off this example. So the payback period, as we mentioned in the previous video, is the time that it takes to recover that initial investment of $250. So let's go through these cash flows one by one. When we get to year one, we've only recovered $100 up until then. It's just that first year cash flow of $100. Once we get to year two, we make another $100. So in total, cumulatively, we have recovered $200. And then in year three, we get another $100. So in total, we've recovered $300. And then uh, in the fourth year, we get another 100, so in total, we've recovered 400. So notice how we recover $250 somewhere in between the second and the third year. So our payback period is going to be two point something years. Well, notice how up until the second year, we've recovered $200 but we want to recover 250. We're trying to recover that initial investment. So there are 50 more dollars left to recover after the second year. And in that third year, we're going to be making a total of $100 worth of cash flow. And that's going to happen throughout the year. So how long after the second year is it going to take us out of that $100 cash flow to recover 50? Well, it's going to take us 0.5 years, 50 divided by 100. So the payback period would be 2.5 years to recover that $250 investment with this asset. Now let's take that same example and let's figure out what the discounted payback period would be. So what you would do in this case is you would take all of the cash flows and present value them to time zero using the discount rate. So let's start off with this first cash flow at time zero, this $250 investment. Well, because it's at time zero, if we discount that to time zero, it just stays the same. We're not even discounting it. But this $100 happens in one year. So what we have to do is we have to take that $100 and then discount it by 10% for one year. And if we do that, we would get $91. So notice how this column here is the discounted cash flow column. So we're taking all the cash flows from the asset in the future and then discounting them to time zero. So this 83 here, what we did was we took the $100 in year two and then discounted by 10%, the discount rate given for two years. And then this $100 we discount by three years by 10%, and then this $100 we discount by four years by 10%, and we would get $75 and $68 respectively. So these here represent the discounted cash flows the discounted future cash flows of the asset, these future cash flows of $100 from year one to year four. And now once we have this, we just follow the same steps to find the discounted payback period that we've been doing here. So following the same steps that we did here, the first year we've recovered $91. In the second year, we have this discounted cash flow of 83, so we would add that to the previous cash flow of 91. So, so far in total, we've recovered $174, 
worth of present value cash flows. The third year, the present value of the third year cash flow is 75. So in total, we've recovered 174 plus 75, $249 worth of present value cash flows. And then in the third or in the fourth year, we get 68. So 249 plus 68 gives us $317 that we've recovered in present value cash flows. So notice to recover that initial investment of 250, we recovered it sometime in between year three and four. So we know our discounted payback period is going to be three point something. Now, notice how up until the third year, in terms of present value cash flows, we've recovered $249. So to get to 250, we only have to recover $1 more. And then that $1, we divide by that next year discounted cash flow of 68 to get how long it would take between year three and four to recover that $1 out of that next year cash flow of 68. So when you do that in your calculator, one divided by 68, you would get 0.015. So the discounted payback period is 3.015 years. So that is our answer for this question. And then the payback period was 2.5. Now, one thing to note, notice how the discounted payback period is greater than the payback period. And that's always going to happen. The discounted payback period is always going to be greater than or equal to the payback period. Because when you discount these cash flows, What's going to happen is this column here, the cash flows are going to be smaller because the present value is always going to be smaller than the future value, assuming, of course, that interest rates are positive, which usually they are. So if these cash flows here are smaller that you're working with, it's going to take you longer to recover that initial investment. So that's why that discounted payback period is always going to be greater than the payback period. Now the discounted payback rule, the actual rule that we go over to see whether we take on a project, it's pretty much the exact same as the payback rule, except now we're gonna use the discounted payback period and we just compare that discounted payback period to a cutoff that the company gives for projects. So for example, in this case, if the cutoff was four years, we would accept this project because the discounted payback period is less than that cutoff. We're recovering that initial investment quicker than the cutoff that the company gave of four years. But if the cutoff is three years, because that discounted payback period is greater than the cutoff, then we would reject this project because it takes us longer to recover that initial investment with these discounted cash flows than the cutoff that the company allows us to take. So very similar to the payback rule. That's why I mentioned at the beginning to make sure you watch that video first. Only difference is that you have to take the future cash flows that an asset is generating and then discount them to time zero. And then with those cash flows, you then figure out the payback period. And in this case, it's called the discounted payback period because you're using discounted cash flows. And to finish off, let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages. So the discounted payback rule, it's easy to understand. It's not as easy to implement as the payback rule because now we have to deal with the discount rate. And as I mentioned before, getting the discount rate is a process on its own. So it's a little bit tougher to implement but because we're dealing with a discount rate now, we're including that time value of money. And one of the disadvantages for the payback rule was that it ignored time value of money. So we fixed that issue. Now, a disadvantage of the discounted payback rule is it still ignores cash flows after the cutoff. So it's biased against long-term projects. Like I mentioned before, a project initially may not make you a lot of money. There may be a lot of maintenance required, but after a while, it may start generating you a lot of cash flow in the far future. But if the cash flows are after that cutoff point that the company gives, 
then we're just going to be ignoring that project altogether, even though it might be a positive net present value project for us. It might be a good project for us to undertake. So that's still a disadvantage. So it's bias against long-term projects. However, this can also be an advantage, the fact that it's ignoring cash flows after a cutoff, because longer-term cash flows, as I mentioned before, they're uncertain. They have more risk attached to them. And these payback rules, the payback rule and the discounted payback rule, they're biased against or they're biased for short-term projects. They like cash flows that are happening quickly. So it frees up more money, there's more liquidity. So that can be a good thing as well. So it depends on your perspective. So this can be an advantage as well. But uh, yeah, just know these advantages, know these disadvantages, they can come up on your midterm or on your exam. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.